Hi guys, it's SDJRSNF88 speaking with yet another wagon review. Now this wagon is slightly different in the form that is actually a Hornby model and it will be the only uh, Hornby uh, wagon to be reviewed in this set of uh, wagon uh, reviews as I tend to prefer um, Batman uh, wagons. Um, I don't know why, but, but but Batman wagons I feel have a more sort of are more sort of related to the sort of wagons that I model. While Hornby don't often do new wagons, Batman always bring out about two or three at least new wagons every year. Well, not two or three, about they tend to bring out about four or five new wagons a year. But Hornby tend to only bring out about one or two, and they tend to be of like modern image uh, wagons or um, things that I don't feel would really fit in on my train. But this one that they released uh, in 2013 is actually quite surprising. It is an LMS, uh, as we see on the end. Well, it's LMS, but it's in this one's a BR livery, but it's an LMS uh, four-wheel CCT van uh, built by the LMS. Uh, they're designed for carrying parcels, um, other bulky goods, like um, I think they could also be used for carrying motor cars as well. As I mentioned, this one's in BR Crimson livery. And as you could probably just see there, I got it for £18.99 uh, on there at Bristol Model Centre, which is a starting up model uh, centre in Bristol. Now, um, this price is obviously too much for the model, and I basically bought it for this price, um, but um, basically, to cut a long story short, Humby announced them as an RRP of about £19, which this model is at. Now, um, when uh, halfway through the year, Humby suddenly changed their mind and decided to lower the price by about £5. Um, so bringing the model down to around 14, 13 pounds, which you could pick up for many places now at that price. Obviously, I've already bought the model when the model shop found out about this price change because Hornby didn't really tell uh, the shop about the price change. Uh, anyway, the model shop owner was quite upset that he had actually sold me this wagon for the, that price. Uh, you know, he felt that obviously he had done me wrong by you know, you know, charging five pounds more than what it was worth. Anyway, the model shop's up near um, Harry. Uh, who owns the um, West Somerset Model Railway, and uh, basically the owner told him about the, you know, the misjudgment uh, on the price and said, could you give him back uh, this money? And he basically gave uh, back um, to Harry £5.50, uh, £5 and 50 pence, which Harry, uh, uh, which Harry um, gave to me, and I can't thank them enough for doing that. So thank you. Um, I've forgotten the... I don't know the name of the model shop owner, but uh, thank you ever, ever so much for... for um, being so kind of giving me that money back and also uh, thank you ever so much to Harry for uh, get, uh, uh, bringing the money to me when I met him at the Even Valley Railway. But anyway, it's a stunning model and I could highly recommend getting one. There are a few faults with this wagon which will be seen when it's on the track uh, to do with Hornby's new clever design. But all in all, uh, don't let those things that I say uh, sway you as if, as if it's not a good wagon because it really, really is. So uh, anyway, let's get it on the track and have a closer look at it. Right, uh, here she is on the track. Now, uh, this wagon is, uh, first thing I noticed about it, which I haven't mentioned about some of the other wagons, is the weight. Now, um, the Shunter's truck uh, by Batman was quite light, but that is sort of understandable uh, due to its size. But, amazingly, that actually weighed heavier than this. This is extremely light. As you know, Hornby have been doing their clever design recently, which in some cases has worked extremely well, as personally, I sometimes find some of the quite detailed locos very, very fragile. Uh, but um, this wagon was going to retail around £18, and obviously it cut, they cut the price down last minute to around £15, saving about three quid, uh, which I agree is much better value for that sort of thing. Uh, but one thing that hasn't been added is weight to the wagon. This wagon is unbelievably light. The thing that uh, the basic weight for the wagon is actually the metal wheels, which is very very surprising. Um, as I thought Hornby might have added a bit more weight to them. Although in saying that, I have not had a problem with it derailing, as um, I've only ran it once, and I ran it on uh, Harry's. Um, West Somerset Model Railway, you probably saw it in the gala videos as part of the freight rake. Um, that's where I bought it to. And um, it actually runs extremely well. Um, but apart from that, there, there are a few other criticisms of it, which I'm, uh, have been mentioned before on uh, modeling forums and stuff. And I'll just go quickly through them. Uh, the first is the livery. Um, not the actual livery in general. The livery actually does look pretty good. But you probably see it from the camera. Like the Sentinel, it looks a bit plasticky. Now, um, 
I don't know what it is with this red livery, the, this red livery that Hornby uh, have been implying to uh, locomotives of rolling stock recently, but it does look kind of plasticky um, when you see it on camera. Now, when you actually see it in the flesh, it is actually... Sorry about that little jump there. The camera ran out of battery. Uh, but as I, as I um carrying on with what I was discussing, um, the livery, uh, it does look a bit plasticky um, on camera, um, as, as was proven with the Sentinel that I uh, had. But when you see it in the flesh, it's absolutely uh, pretty stunning. And quite a lot of people uh, on the forums did say that, that when they posted their pictures, it does not look like this in the flesh. Um, it does actually look pretty good. And I mentioned that with my Sentinel as well. Um... So Hornby have done, actually done a pretty good job. The, the crimson livery is actually quite close to the real, well, it's pretty much accurate for the crimson livery. It just doesn't look it on the camera. It just looks quite plasticky on the camera. Uh, some people reckon it, it, it has been painted, believe it or not, because uh, it does almost look like the plastic was coloured like that, but it has been painted. But apparently it's just the thickness of the plastic that makes it look um, quite... Uh, plasticky looking if you know what I mean like the light shining through the plastic although when you see it in the flesh you cannot see it it's just, I don't know what it is with the cameras but the cameras honestly just don't pick up just don't do the wagon justice anyway move on to the roof the roof is quite plain um, there are these two little ridges here above the doors um, but apart from that it is um, you know quite plain um, so not very much uh, to say about that but we move on to the ends and there is quite a lot of detail on the ends. Now these wagons had opening ends, you can see the little, um, uh, my finger ain't on it, but I'll try to get my finger on the camera, but above the buffers, uh, uh, I won't bother, but above the buffers you can see there's a, um, a sort of a rectangle sort of panel, now that would fold down a cover over the buffers to provide like a little ramp, uh, like well like a little corridor sort of thing when it, you know, if it was up to a, coupled up to a loading ramp or up to another um, LMSCCT unit out there, you can see it there, that section there, that would fold down and the two doors above it would open up. Now as you can see there's a lot of detail on there uh, because it's being wood and metal and Hornby have done, actually done a pretty good job of picking out the rivets and also the you know, and the um, bolts that were screwed into the wood on the wagon. Now the buffers are plastic, uh, non-sprung. Um, we got to be careful uh, when purchasing these wagons, as some people have also commented that the buffers are pointing skywards on some of them. When I purchased this one, I did check, compare it to other ones in the shop, and there were a few that had skew width buffers, uh, so that's why I chose this one. Um, but a really good feature which Hornby have done to this one is that the brake pipe, uh, brake pipe and coupling uh, has already been pre-added, as you can just see there. Uh, now it is NEM pocket. Um, which is on these wagons and it does uh, swivel uh, due to the wagon being quite long you can, you can re easily remove those, they do simply pop out um, onto the side, back onto the, the crimson livery we have this stunning, when it goes into focus it was in focus a second ago but now it's not um, there you go the stunning text that has been applied to the side you got the length, you got the inside, you got the width and all the wagon, you got the load, and also you got the, the number of the wagon, all these other uh, sort of codes on there. But I, I'm not going to go through them all because um, I'm bound to pronounce some wrong, But because um, I am reading it off the screen, but you can probably see it there pretty clearly that it's extremely legible. The corner to the side is also, there is a running number, sorry. <laughs> it was down there, but there you are. It says CCT unit, load eight tons. And it says Midland, it's a Midland region wagon. And it says uh, 37230, which is its running number. Uh, then we come on to the chassis. Now the chassis is, um, again, plastic. Um, but you can see there's quite a lot of detail around the axle boxes. Now, surprisingly, there's not a lot of brake rigging on this wagon. Um, this has the only real brake handle. There's one on the other side. I've got a funny feeling as well. Uh, but um, someone has added on RM Web um, some more brake rigging to the bottom. So, uh, as there's some weird sort of um, wire type uh, braking behind the wheels, which Hornby haven't um, bothered to include, which is sort of understandable, as it is very, very delicate. Uh, sort of looking what the what the guy added to it, so it is quite delicate. But there weren't any like you know, those um, big uh, underside like battery boxes or anything on these wagons. They were quite basic, uh, or any of those um, you know, sort of the brake rigging compressors. It was all you know very basic sort of thing. 
they come onto the other end of the wagon, the other end is precisely the same. I think that was sort of designed because these were used for multiple, um, carrying multiple multiple loads sort of thing. And I think that the end doors with a, with a flap on the bottom, they were good for loading motor vehicles, I presume. Like the GWR Mogo uh, wagon, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, as, I, as I didn't realise, but they were actually used, uh, until recently, they were actually used for transporting cars. Um, yeah, they would fit a car inside, basically. So I presume that one of the uses for this is they could also transport cars. Now, they were seen in goods train rakes, and they were also seen on the back of express trains. There might be one, two, or even three, or even more on the back of an express train carrying cars, as I mentioned, or other parceled goods. So, or, or just parcels in general. So, um... Yeah, so it might be on feature in the back on the back of um, express trains or passenger trains um, in future videos. But for now, it will, um, it will feature in the running video as part of the freight rake. So stay tuned uh, for watching that. Uh, if you can't wait to see her in action until the running video in a few um, days' time, um, do uh, check out um, the West Somerset um, Model Railway. Uh, gala video which I filmed which is the um, WSMR uh, gala video which I filmed with Harry where I, added, where I spent many many hours adding the sound and in the freight rake you will see her feature so anyway uh, that's all for now we'll move on to the next wagon so uh, this is SDJR Seleph88 speaking and uh, thanks for watching